Hey everybody, what's going on? Baru here, back inside of Borderlands 2. Handsome Edition's coming up. And today I want to go over the most overpowered build in Borderlands 2. Period. Nothing beats it. It is the best mobbing, it's the best raiding. Sure, a few things can beat it out in a few aspects, but overall, this is going to literally face roll the game. And for those who wish to do that, you can. So let's go ahead and meet Gage the Necromancer with Norfleets. Now, for those who are not aware, a Norfleet is one of the most powerful weapons in this entire game. It comes from Hyperius or Vermivorous, whichever one you want to end up farming. And this is the only place you can get this thing. As you can see, it has a lot of base damage, pretty decent reload, but what makes this thing so crazy is its blast radius. This thing is gigantic. Gigantic. I mean, if I fire from all the way over here, you can see that the splash radius is still hitting me even from this far away. So you can get an idea of how close you're going to need to actually be to the enemy to hurt this thing. Now, for your healing needs, you're going to be using a Grog Nozzle, which all you got to do is swap to it and throw your grenade and you're good to go. Which we're going to be using a Chain Lightning. There we go, Chain Lightning. And for your regenerating we have a Logan's gun. Now, how exactly does the Logan's gun work? Well, let me go ahead and show you. So I'm gonna fire off some rounds into the sky here, and you'll notice that I have 21 out of 33 rocket ammo. All you need to do is take your Logan's gun, point it at the ground with your sham on, and fire at the ground. And just like that, I now have full rocket ammo. Now, the reason this works is because the splash damage from the Logan's gun counts as a rocket. And because the sham will absorb it, you're absorbing a rocket. This makes literally no sense, but whatever. It's in the game, it's cool. It's not necessarily a glitch, it's just how the game functions. It's just putting two pieces of gear together and saying, all right, that's interesting. So anyway, that will be the weapons that we're gonna be using. Now, should you be using corrosive, fire, or even shock? Now, everyone's gonna probably say, play shock gauge. When in reality, Shock Gauge is not necessarily the best thing in the world. The only reason you want to use Shock Gauge is if you don't want to swap to a different element. But as far as specking her out, please don't spec into Shock. It's not worth it. So let's go ahead and go over the gear um, in terms of the shield, the, the class mod, and those things. So your shield is always going to be a sham. Because that's going to absorb the E-Tech splash radius of your launcher. You're going to want a legendary anarchist class mod. Or, if you want to go for true overkill, you can go for Slayer of Terramorphous. Now, Slayer of Terramorphous is going to give you an additional 200 stacks of Anarchy. Which is really overkill unless, you're going to plan, unless you plan on fighting, say, Veracitus. But, hey, if you want to go there, you can. But one thing that's really good about the Legendary Anarchist is that you don't have to stack the additional Anarchy. And it gives you 56% more gun damage. But the, mo the reason that I like the Legendary Anarchist so much is because it gives you 10 out of 5 in, in, into unstoppable force. So when you kill an enemy, you're regenerating 8% of your shield capacity every second, and you move 70% faster. In addition, it gives you more uh, shield capacity and a faster or smaller lighter faster for better reloads with typecast iconoclast for better stacking. So there's definitely a lot of benefits in the Legendary Anarchist. You do lose 200 stacks, but you really don't need it. Now for Bones, you're just going to swap to whatever element you happen to be using. If you're going to go through a loader-based area, might as well put on a Corrosive Bone. If you're going to go through you know, a flesh-based area, throw on a Fire Bone. If you just don't care and just want to shoot the thing, put on, a, you know, put on a Shock Bone. That way you won't have to swap between elements. Now, we do have conference calls here, and they do synergize well with Gage, as there is close enough and the, the nth degree, but we'll go more on that later. And there's a magic missile for slagging, but I wouldn't use that, because you don't need slag. So, what about the spec? How exactly do we spec this character out? Now, there is a skill called Wires Don't Talk, which gives you 15% more damage. This is not worth it. The reason I say that is because if you use shock on flesh, you are only going to be getting that 15%. Whereas if I was to use fire on flesh, I would be getting an additional 75%. This is why I say shock gauge is not worth it. The amount of points you need to invest to get all the way down to wires don't talk and then actually specking into wires don't talk is just not worth it in my opinion. 
So let's go ahead and go over Ordered Chaos first. You're going to want to put one point to Anarchy, and Anarchy increases your gun damage by 1.75%, and decreases your accuracy by 1.75%. Next, we have Smaller, Lighter, Faster, an additional 54% reload speed, with only minus 9% mag. Increase, uh, you want to go into Pre-Shrunk Cyberpunk for Increased Anarchy. We put one point to Discord in case you mess up a reload. 10 and 2 Typecast Iconoclast. You can choose to opt out of this. That's entirely up to you. I like to spec into it, so I spend less time stacking. Then I put three points into Annoyed Android. The reason I do this is that way Death Trap can get to me faster if he happens to be far away. That way he can give me Buck Up, another skill that we're about to talk over. Uh, for Little Big Trouble, I put five points into More Pep for slightly increased slag chance when I happen to use slag nades. And five points into... Uh, Mei Lin, which gives you 30% more shield capacity with the Legendary Anarchist. Also gives you some shock damage resistance, which is nice. Now, for the best friends forever, you're, I could just say, pick up everything except for Potent as a Pony and Explosive Clap. But I'm going to go ahead and go over why you want all these skills. You're going, you're going to go cooking up trouble for some passive health regen in between reloads of uh or in between firing of your nor fleet so when you move from area to area you're going to be you know regenerating that lost health if you lose any close enough so that way if you want to use the uh the conference calls then you can basically ricochet and not have to aim at all fancy, fancy mathematics so that way you can regenerate your shield faster buck up so death trap can give you a portion of your shield if you just can't get your shield up the better half for increased fire rate. This is more use on the conference calls than the Nor fleets. Unstoppable force, that way we can move faster after we get a kill and regenerate our health. Upshot robot, so we can keep Death Trap active for longer. The actual melee damage increase is not very noticeable. Made of sterner stuff for a little bit of damage reduction, which is nice, but you can throw this wherever. 20% cooler, so that way the cooldown on Death Trap is a little bit shorter. And then I do sharing his carrying, so that way he lives longer with my sham. We're going to be able to give him that sham, or whatever shield you happen to be wearing. But more than likely, it's going to be a sham. So that's going to be the spec. That's going to be the gear. And as far as stacking Anarchy goes, you're going to want to go into Pyro Pete's Bar. That's going to be the best place in order for you to stack up all of your Anarchy. Now I'm going to go ahead and let some gameplay roll out. Thank you all for watching this guide. As always, there will be a link in the description if you want to download this file and mess around with it yourself. This is the most overpowered build period for Overpower 8 if you don't want to go into the terms of glitching. Now, if you want to see glitching in terms of that and merging and all that craziness, we can get much more ridiculous. Much more. But this is probably the best glitchless type build that you're going to find and you're going to see in the gameplay why exactly that is i hope you all enjoyed this guide if you do be sure to hit that like button let me know hey i want more of these guides i'm going to be getting the handsome edition and you know i want to know how this game works so thank you all for watching everybody enjoy the gameplay and i'll say i'll catch you all in the next one everyone. later